empty outside as well as in at the end of the game. Look, we'll talk more about this, but you have to give credit to Frank Lampard, Joe, for making a big, bold decision at half-time, but also to the players that came on for carrying out his wishes and winning the game for him in the case of Ross Barkley. Yeah, for sure. I think it was a great decision to to do it. I think because it wasn't working in the first half. I think the young lads as well. We we've, we've been there when you you're young and you're on a run, and sometimes you have games when it don't work. But what a kind of luxury Frank's got. He's he's brought on three international players there. I thought Barkley was excellent when he come on. Kovacic come on and, and kept the ball moving. I think you know Frank showing in his his managerial career he's willing to make big decisions you know we've seen it you know early on with Louise getting him out the door and then in games now he's making bold big decisions and they're turning out more often not to be the right decision so he'd be really pleased with himself and as for the young players as well I think I've been in that situation before I think it's just a little like a little lesson you learn as a professional footballer that every minute on that pitch counts and you have to be right at it and sharp and they'll come back because they're free of the they're, they're three of the most talented players in the country but in terms of Chelsea it's a, it's a great win it's yeah. a great great win and, and in another semi-final and we found some pictures actually of, of how Frank and his coaching team dealt with those players that were taken off so we'll have a look at those a bit later on we know they support youth eight times they've named academy players so far this season more than ever in Chelsea's history but today it was the experience that made the difference so that's another FA Cup quarter final done and dusted as we said footballer rather than just cliches look the three of us or four of us I suppose let's have a chat about how the game unfolded and you've all mentioned that Leicester were toothless and they are struggling for goals only scored one since the restart but you've got issues with the defending for the, for the Chelsea goal haven't you yeah and I think they've done very well up to now uh, up to this, or this, this period in terms of defending um, and they've not had much to worry about in that sense but you see here there's a throw on for Chelsea they do ever so well getting it out of there spreading the pitch open it up Aspilicueta makes a big run out wide opens the, the, the pitch up and I'll stop it in a sec once we get here but you see the gap between the two centre, centre backs developing when that happens that big gap comes the, the big job in this here is from this man here, Ndidi, who's had rave reviews and rightly so for the last couple of years for the way he's played. But once you see the gap from your two centre-backs, when the ball's wide, his job is then to drop in. Drop in here and be that guard in so there. You should be looking as much at the opposition as at that gap just to make sure... Well, I'm pleased you said he should be looking because if you keep your eye on Ndidi here and you watch how many times he looks over his shoulder to check where uh, Barkley is, You'll see it now. There's the one look. There's the two looks. Once he looks there, he has to drop in, like I said. You've got to drop in there and be able to cover the run from this man. Because Barkley, where's he want to go? He sees, he knows he can get in behind Ndidi because he's not looking. He wants to get in there. Ndidi doesn't drop back to make to, to cover that run. And does Soyuncu not drop in because he's there? He expects Soyuncu to had to come out there because William was there. Right. He starts ambling back, but... On the understanding that your, your, your centre midfielder, your defensive Covers midfielder you. is there, he should be covering. That's a fact. And what you see when it develops as well is Johnny Evans, one of my old teammates, he sees this, but he's marking his man there, um, Tammy Abraham. Once he sees it, he will come over and try and cover. But when it happens at this level, it's too quick, the quality is too good, there's a great cross, and the timing eliminates defenders out of it. And, you, and I'll run it slowly for you here. Barkley sees the space, darts into it, Great ball, great finish, timing, it had everything. Fantastic. But bad defending from Ndidi in the midfield. I love it when we break that sort of moment down into such tiny details, but you, we can take nothing away, Joe, from a great ball, a great run, a great finish. Nah, it's interesting what Ross said. He's been picking up things from Frank because Frank was the, the, the best in the world at that. And as soon as Rio said, it's about timing. And if you see Ross, when William gets the ball, he's actually, Ross is in line with him. So he, and as he takes it out of his feet, he times it perfectly to get in there. But this little one-two in here and he gets it back and Ross is in line with him now. And then he, and then he goes and releases. So it's such a lovely weighted pass. And in the second part of it, you'll see better from this angle. Because he's running onto it and he's got a little bit over the front post, he has to rotate his whole body and sort of shovel it round on the half volley. So it's a fantastic finish. And I'm pleased for Ross because what you said, Jake, you know, he's fighting for his place. They're all fighting for their place. They're all top-class players. Uh, you know, Ross has played over 30 times for England now. He's 26 
Um, if anything, you know, the talk of Madison's and Grealish's and all that, see, he's sort of been forgotten, but he, he's a massive, massive talent. I, I and think I'm pleased that he's, he's, he's done well today and he, he can crack on. Sorry, Joe, I, I think Ross Bartley is somebody who could benefit massively from Frank Lampard. Frank Lampard, like Joe said, was the best at getting in the box. He just needs to listen to Frank and understand when the timing is right to go into the box. And once you're there, then you've got to be cold. He's a good finisher once he gets in there, as he just proved there. But you've got to listen to someone like Frank, who's got that experience, got that know-how of someone who's done things in your position, who saw and lived and breathed in them, in them areas. Barkley needs to be doing that. And he's got a chance. He's got fantastic ability. Came on the scene. Everyone said, wow, what a player. What a specimen. Hasn't kicked on like you'd want to see. This is the time. The time is now. Frank can't give him natural talent. He's got plenty of that. Can Frank make him a better decision maker though, Robbie? I was sitting next to Rio watching some of those moments with Ross. Brilliant that he won the game for them. Great that he scored the goal. But there were still moments where Rio was thinking, why, why have you done that? Yeah, it was one great example, wasn't it? Towards the end of the game when he was four on two. And, you know, on two occasions, he picked the wrong option. Listen, they pressed really well. Um, and to be fair, in this one, I don't think that Tammy Abram helped him. Just look at Abram's run. He doesn't do anything. If he runs sprints, he can then play the ball earlier. Um, and then again, he's got to play Pedro in. It's a shot on target. But maybe that's what, you know, people will question sometimes Ross's decision making there. I think Tammy Abram needs to do more. He's, you know, he's, he doesn't sprint. You know, and there he could have easily put um, the Chelsea player in and then, you know, first touch, Pedro in. He's got a free shot of goal, but he decides to shoot. But, you know, I think the beauty of, you know, the, the, for the bigger squads, Jake, Rio and Joe, is um, the fact that Frank made three substitutions at half-time, top quality players. The better, bigger clubs, better squads are allowed to do that. You, play, you bring it on world well top top players if you look you know I know clubs voted for it but I think it does benefit the bigger better clubs I agree with you totally Robbie but one one thing I'd like to touch upon there is that the young players who have been taken off we spoke about how highly rated these young players are they've now been taken off dragged off at half time you'd say it's important that these young players don't start thinking, oh, well, let's, let's play the blame game and blame someone. Oh, it's easy to pick on us because we're young and stuff. No, look at yourself. Take responsibility. I wasn't up to scratch today, maybe. What can I do to, 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 to make sure the manager thinks, yeah, I can believe in him again and put him in again? Because there's no doubt Frank knows the, the personality of these players. They can handle this type of response that he's given them or the, the, the kind of, not public dressing down, but coming off a half time can be a little bit demoralising but Frank knows the personality of these boys and I'm sure during the week he'll get, put his arm around a couple of them and say listen I do believe in you but you need tough love at times yeah. and it's about taking responsibility ownership of your performances and then moving on well, I'll tell you what we're going to take a quick break when we come back we're really going to focus on that actually we're going to talk about the young players at Chelsea the evolution under Frank Lampard you know what Joe I really like this from Frank he takes the young players off he makes it clear that's not good enough and then says to us post-match they're going to be top, top players. And that's, that's a good, strong way of dealing with young talent, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, and, and I've got no doubt that them young players will, will deal with it. That's, that's no doubt at all. I think it's a lot like parenting. Eh? Sometimes you've got to do things, you've got to tell your kids off and you've got to do that and for the benefit of them. And I think them young players, I think young Billy today, who I'm a, I'm a massive fan of, I think it's his first time playing in a number eight position today. Uh, from the start and the game was very hectic and he just found himself like Frank said a little bit lethargic and you know that lesson needs to be learned today in this FA Cup quarter final and never to be done again by him because he's so talented he can't afford to, to play like this and you know I just think what Frank said there was absolutely bang on and he's got the result we're in the next round of the cup but he's also he's able to teach some fantastic young players a lesson in what it takes to be you know Frank Lampard level you know, um, levels of play, levels of how you apply yourself. And I think today, is it, he'll, he'll sit back on the coach, Frank. I know he's a little bit disappointed there, but he'll be, he'll be happy that, that they got through it and, and them boys coming off the pitch will be able to go, right, let's not let that happen again. Let's, let's make sure that we're on it. I, I think it was key about it. Like you see him there, he's talking to him there. But what he, what's great about it is he's setting a standard. There's a level here that you've got to hit week in week out and it starts on a training pitch he's creating a culture and I think if Frank sit, is sitting there he's laying the law down for the players that's a subtle if not subtle for the young players that are, that are on the receiving end but for the rest of the squad that's a marker to say listen anyone now 
because I love my kids. I love the. I love bringing in the young players. That's what I've been doing. But anyone will be absolutely punished and dragged off at any time in the game for the good of this team. And you have to work hard. You have to be doing things right. And you have to be on blood from from minute one. Robbie, I want to talk to you a little bit about Leicester. We spoke to a Leicester fan there, and you know he was very clear. He said, "Look, a rebuild is is not what we need, but we do have to invest." And the message is clear, isn't it, for the Leicester board when you see the emergence of Wolves and the other teams pushing around them? Well, when you said, Jake, you know, do Leicester need a rebuild? I nearly, I nearly fell off my chair. <laughs> the third in the Premier League, they've got to the semi-final of the of the of the Carabao Cup. They've just got knocked up of the out of the quarter-final of the, Car- of, the, of the of the FA Cup. The average age of the squad is early twenties. They had three players there over the age of thirty: Schmeichel, Vardy, Johnny Evans. It's a very young squad, and you're saying they need a rebuild? That's absolute nonsense. I'm asking the question. I've asked. I've asked it. You've answered it. That's perfect. Well, that's, it, well, it was, That's it, how it, it works. They, they need a rebuild. The third. The third in the Premier League. This is what I mean. People now question Chris Wilde and Sheffield United. They're eighth in the Premier League. FA Cup quarter final. It's absolute nonsense. Rebuild Leicester. Jake, they're having one of the best seasons ever. We're talking. They might drop out of the Champions League places. Leicester City. 5,000 to 1 Premier League winners. And people saying rebuilds. Do me a favour. Brilliant. Do they need to reinvest, Robbie? Well, the whole team need to reinvest. Liverpool will probably need to reinvest, Jake. They're going to have one of the best Premier League seasons ever, if not break all the records. The third in the Premier League, Leicester City. Let that sink in for a minute. It's brilliant. Look at, Spurs, it's brilliant. Look at Manchester United. They're ahead of Chelsea. They don't That's, need to rebuild. Do you think they'll, do you think they'll finish in the, in the top four? Well, if they do, it'd be a fantastic, it'd be unbelievable, Jake. Unbelievable. Leicester that, City. That's not, that is, third that's not been given deserved. Just let that sink in. It's fantastic. I'm being serious. I'm, I'm, I get fed up with people saying, do they need a rebuild? It's nonsense. There you go. You've made your point. That's what the forum's for. Made me, ang- made me angry, that. We asked the question. You <laughs> made me angry, them. that. Very good. Uh, no, we didn't notice. Right, uh, let's see what happened in the other game today. Of course, it was Sheffield United against Arsenal. And uh, here's what unfolded. <laughs> 